Hello students, looking at current affairs for 2nd May, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 9, we will look at them in detail. The first one, lockdown extended till May 17, curbs stay on public transport. So, Ministry of Home Affairs on 1st May 2020 has issued new guidelines allowing considerable relaxations across the three zones which the country is divided into districts have been divided into red orange and green zones based on evidence of covid 19 infection so they have been given relaxation but countrywide lockdown has been extended which was to end on may 3 has been extended till may 17 now so the lockdown first imposed on march 24 was to end on 14th april then it got extended to may 3 and now till may 17 also, ICMR, it is said, has now reached a per day testing level of about 70,000 and has conducted 9 lakh tests so far in the country. Then next is, Health Ministry identifies 130 districts as red zones. So, Union Health Ministry has announced a list of 130 districts in the country which are under red zone, 284 districts in the orange zone and 319 districts in the green zone. So, green zones are districts where there have been no a confirmed case of COVID-19 or no case confirmed case so far ever or in the last 21 days. So that is green zone then comes the red zone. Red zone is actually defined as per the total number of active cases, the doubling rate of confirmed cases and extent of testing and surveillance feedback from the district. While the orange zone is those which are left out. So those districts which are neither in the red zone nor on the green zone are orange zones. Also, it is highlighted by experts that in buffer zones, extensive surveillance to monitoring is required like any influenza like illness or severe acute respiratory infections have to be monitored carefully so that uh, disease does not spread from between the among the zones. As such. Also, a number of uh, red zones in that you should know that all 11 districts of Delhi have been classified under the red zone and UP has 19 districts in red zone, Maharashtra 14, Tamil Nadu 12. Gujarat and MP9 each. So, these are the most uh, concentrated red zones states. Also, Assam, Himachal Pradesh, Ladakh, Meghalaya, Puducherry and Tripura have no red zone districts. So, there has been this new directive come out which is called National Directive for COVID-19 Management. So, in green zones what is allowed now is buses can operate with up to 50% seating capacity and bus depots can also operate with about 50% capacity. In orange zone, taxis and cab aggregators will be permitted to ply but with only one passenger. And inter-district movement will be allowed in orange zones for permitted activities. Also, shops selling liquor, gutka and tobacco will now be allowed, will be opened in orange and green zones and also in rural areas. But then social distancing has to be maintained. In red zone, other than containment zones, private cars will be allowed only for permitted activities with a maximum of two persons other than the driver and no pillion riders on two wheelers. Also, all private offices even in red zones can operate with up to 33% strength as per requirement. But uh, interstate movement by road has been completely suspended. Public transport has been, has remained suspended. So, except for allowed, certain allowed categories. Also, schools, colleges, hotels, restaurants, cinema halls, malls, gyms and all kinds of social, political, cultural, religious gatherings remain prohibited across the country. Also, movement of individuals for all non-essential activities will be restricted between 7 p.m. Uh, will be restricted means there will be no movement allowed from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So, throughout the day it would be allowed. Also, persons above 65 years of age, persons with comorbidities, pregnant women, children below the age of 10 years shall stay at home, except for meeting essential health requirements. Also, government offices will function with higher level senior officials up to 33 per, uh, uh, coming in full attendance and remaining staff at 33%. Also, local authorities have been asked to ensure 100% coverage of Arogya C2 app amongst the residents in the containment zone. So, in the containment zones, 100% coverage should be there and also for both public and private employees, Arogya Setu is being made mandatory. So, it should be the responsibility of the head of the organization to ensure 100% coverage of this app among the employees. So, this has been announced. So, here you can see the number of red, orange and green zones for the 10 states which have most number of red zones is shown. Like number of in UP, Maharashtra. 
and what we just discussed the gist of what has been allowed in red orange and green zones and this is the map of the country you can see how red zones are interspersed here so east of india is majorly in the green zone you can see and here you have again the uh, allowed and prohibited activities detailed out in red orange and green zones the next is world health organization raises concern over use of bcg vaccine so world health organization director general tedros a ghebreyesus and others have highlighted few critical issues over the use of bcg vaccine so you should know about bcg vaccine it has been recommended for covid 19 but it has not been approved yet because trials have not been undertaken so the report actually letter actually highlights the importance of randomized controlled trials of the vaccine to understand its safety and efficacy before using it on healthcare workers so trials are going on in netherland and australia so bcg vaccine yes it enhances the innate immune response to subsequent infections and it might reduce the viral load of covid-19 as such to uh, the sars cov cov2 virus but then uh, whether it will be beneficial or not to have this vaccination given to healthcare workers has to be studied further there can be other complications which can develop is been stated and also it is said that uh, there is an association it is clearly evident that countries that have universal bcg vaccination like including india have reduced coronavirus cases and even deaths also the world health organization is concerned that if bcg vaccine is used in such a manner throughout the world for healthcare workers then it will further jeopardize vaccine supply which is already short to protect children against disseminated tb in high risk countries so basically bcg vaccine is the vaccine which is given a shot in the arm when the child is born so it is given in india also there is universal coverage it is called bacillacalmic gurin uh, vaccine which is against the tb bacteria so this is vaccine which is given in the in the within the first year of birth or within you know initial days of the birth only so this bcg vaccine as such is it seems to have positive effect and helps in fighting covid-19 so that's it but then the world health organization says further trial randomized trials are required to approve this then this is railways run shramik specials to ferry stranded so railways has begun operating shramik special trains to transport migrant workers tourists pilgrims students and others stranded by national wide uh, lockdown back to their home states so these are uh, special trains routine passenger trains remain suspended they have been suspended for the last 40 days now since the lockdown was announced on 24th march 2020 and these special trains are for identified people registered people who have been registered by the state governments and the fares would also be paid by the state governments means you cannot buy tickets to these trains it's only for states that railways will be operating this service shramik special trains then next is direct tax revenue defy lockdown jump 36.6% in april So direct tax collection recorded a healthy growth in April 2020 despite nationwide lockdown and grew 36.6% compared to April 2019 figures. So income tax collection in April uh, has been high while corporate tax collection has been on the lower end compared to income tax and the government is expected however to miss the target because total direct tax collection target for the financial year 2019-20 ending March 2020 has been down you can see Uh, here the collection as such which was targeted was 11.7 lakh crores for 2019-20 but the government collected only 7.52 lakh crores it is data till jan 31 so it is unlikely to be fulfilled also indirect tax collection that is gst will also be going down gst collection in april may will decline drastically because even the number of electronic permits for transporting goods are down 80% and when the lockdown been extended till may 17 now it is further going to have uh, adverse effect on gst collection the next is environment ministry gives not for new parliament project so center's proposal to construct a new parliament building next to the existing heritage structure has been approved by environment ministry's expert appraisal committee 
so the approval has been given subject to the outcome of the legal challenge which has been there we have discussed this yesterday about the land use change of land use so land from recreational purpose it has been changed to land use has been changed to parliament so this was through a notification by ministry of housing and urban affairs so this is a change in the master plan of delhi and this has been challenged in the supreme court so the environment ministry's expert appraisal committee has given approval to this new parliament building subject to the outcome of the legal challenge but it has also said that since the there is no stay order given by the supreme court on this issue so we will continue with our work and we will continue approvals so that is being done trees would be cut down it is said of 333 trees on the plot would be cut down so there will be transplantation of trees taking place Uh, hundred of them will be retained too; they will not be cut, and more trees would also be planted. Has been assured by the Central Public Works Department. It also said that there is no significant impact on public spaces in this new program because already the entire area is a high security zone, so the area would never be used for recreational purposes. But then, used for recreational purposes, actually open space too. Open space is also a recreational space. It is full of greenery and can be. You know, considered as a place for recreational, but CPWD Central Public Works Department says that uh, anyway it cannot be used for recre recreational purpose, so we'll use it for a new parliament building. Also, the project cost submitted by Central Public Works Department has gone up. Earlier it has submitted it will cost seven hundred and seventy six crores. Now it has gone up to nine hundred and twenty two crores due to change in project specifications. Even before any work has begun on it, even while the permissions are being given. So already the uh, cost has gone up, and CPWD states that the project was the expansion of the existing building on the neighborhood plot. So environment impact will be minor or incremental. So already there is a parliament building, so that's what it is saying. So this EIA environment impact assessment, which has been done by Central Public Works Department, is calling it minor and incremental work. Means uh, entire parliament building, uh, entire project. Uh, you know full environment assessment has not been done even on only the parliament project it's not been done and for the entire central vista development which we have seen the entire stretch from rashtrapati bhavan to india gate so that has also not uh, undergone a full environment assessment so environmental researchers are highlighting this critical point so this is the central vista and the parliament Uh, zone as such it is shown so this is the parliament complex so plan for ex uh, existing building is there means it says that the current building needs revamp and revamp cannot take place unless they are shifted so first a new building would be created where the parliament would be shifted and then the old building would be revamp so it's like you want to renovate your house so you will first build a new house and you know it will be a modernized new fully equipped house and then you will renovate your old house but you're not going to use the old house again if you have a new house so the idea of having this done for renovate for renovating the old house does not make sense so that's it then next is ministry of defense for contributing one day salary every month to pm cares fund So after the contribution of one day salary for the employees, all employees of Ministry of Defence to PM Cares Fund, now proposal is to have one day salary every month of the, for the entire financial year till March 2021. So one day salary every month of all employees of Ministry of Defence would go to PM Cares Fund. So already uh, it, this is applicable to all, all three services: the defence, public sector undertaking employees, and others too. So contribution, it is said, is voluntary. so those desirous of opting out will be exempted means every in, it is assumed everybody will contribute if you want to opt out you have to specifically mention already also defense public sector undertakings and ordnance factory boards are making contribution to pm cares fund through csr corporate social responsibility funds too so this is ministry of defense which has announced that it will not be a one time effort of one day salary but every month for the entire financial year one day salary will go to pm cares fund earlier even finance ministry issued a circular dated april 17 on contribution of a day salary every month of all its employees to the fund so finance ministry has already issued such a notification and now ministry of defense has also come up with a similar notification 
also finance ministry's notification has stated that if any officer wants to opt out then he has to intimate drawing and disbursing officer in writing so this had created a concern that why they have to write give in writing so the order was modified and said anyone willing to contribute has to write to the drawing and disbursing officer that they want to contribute this is the PM Cares Fund, a special fund which has been announced. So there is a National Prime Minister Disaster Response Fund. So this PM Cares Fund is primarily for dealing with any kind of emergency or distress situation. So you don't consider this as a one-time fund for COVID-19. The money which will be accumulated here will stay in it. It's not going to be spent and used off one time for fighting COVID-19, but even for future COVID-19 related like cases, such as when distress arises then this money would be used. So, here you can see the fund has as a as its chairman, the prime minister and defense minister, home minister and finance minister its members. The next is economists call for urban job scheme. So, there is money which needs to be spent on ensuring livelihood to a huge section of the population in the country and money is not being spent here. So, this is MGNREG already is not seeing enough being done because states are not implementing it and economists are now calling even for an Urban Employment Guarantee Act on the similar lines. So, the way we have MGNREG in rural areas, an urban area scheme needs to be there as such too is what has been recommended. Also, MGNREG funding is being recommended to be increased to at least 1 lakh crore for the next 3 months because there is an unprecedented unemployment crisis in the country. But here steps are not being taken. The recommended relaxation of 100 days of work is also there. So, economists are recommending. These are just uh, economists like Jean Reze and others who are making recommendations to the government. The government may or may not accept them. And it's highly unlikely that government would accept these recommendations. So, recommendation is relaxation of 100 days of work per household unit. And also it has suggested that all individuals who wish to work under the scheme be given employment for as many days as needed. Because MGNREG has uh, assures 100 days of work. But now people are unemployed and they would need to work every day. So the recommendation is that uh, it can go up to full year too, no limit of 100 days. Already it says the infrastructure is in place to respond to the unprecedented employment unemployment crisis. So government should take steps here, provide employment to the people. Migrants returning from cities to villages, it is said, may not have MG and REG job cards. So, group has suggested even anyone wanting work should be given a job with card registration made available on site. Also, economists ask for full minimum wages in cash as well as dry rations to be paid. So, cash payment should be done and it should be done within 7 days rather than current 15 days limit. It said online transfer should not be done, bank account payments because it will further lead to overcrowding in rural banks because people need money to spend and cash in hand is required right now. And uh, people prevented from working during this pandemic, like uh, you know, uh, those aged above over 50, disabled, sick, pregnant women, they should be paid full wages for the duration of the restrictions. This is what has been highlighted in these recommendations by prominent economists to the government. And the last news is, UP Bihar migrants can get rations in other states too. So, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar have joined central government's ration card portability scheme which is called One Nation One Ration Card. So, this scheme offers some hope to migrant workers because now they can start accessing subsidized and free food grains in many states where they have been left stranded due to COVID-19 outbreak. So, so far now we have 17 states and union territories integrated into this system. Uh, other states which have joined apart from UP and Bihar are Punjab, Himachal Pradesh and the Union Territories, Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diyu. Already states which are under it are uh, Andhra Pradesh, Goa, Gujarat, Haryana, Jharkhand, Kerala, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Telangana and Tripura. And all remaining states Union Territories should also come on board and the deadline is by June 1, 2020. So, this is the one nation, one ration card scheme, but then this will function through uh, having electronic points of sale machines at all ration shops. So, EPOS uh, machines have to be there to, and uh, this complete installation has not been done by states. Also, Aadhaar data has be, to be seeded into the National Food Security Act database because it will work through Aadhaar. And biometric uh, verification is essential because it should not result in double withdrawal of uh, of the 
PDS of the of the food grains as such both in the state in which they stay and the state where they have migrated. So also the food minister had announced that the project will be halted because of pandemic but then Supreme Court directed the center to consider whether it was possible to implement the scheme presently because of the plight of migrant workers who have been left stranded. So they may need rations in the place where they are stranded. So also the city government has started uh, this that okay more states have joined in so this new states five new states means uh, 60 crore more beneficiaries to the national food security act now. but then uh, it is dependent on the states the states have to pick up entitled quota food grains as such and they make it available at ration shops and also center has said that actual implementation will still depend on on-field readiness because you know facility facilitating EPOS, biometric identification and Aadhaar verification would only ensure food grains reaching to the migrant workers or reaching to the beneficiaries. So that is a huge concern. So this is one nation one ration card scheme as proposed on paper. So but then it is ration card Aadhaar linkage that is must to access the portability scheme. So it is proposed to be rolled out across the country on 1st July 2020 but now steps have been taken to implement it presently. Also migrants will be allowed to buy a maximum of 50% of the family quota because if one of the if the family or entire family has not shifted so they can also access and the remainder can be accessed by the family in the home state. So those provisions are also there under this one nation one ration card scheme. The scheme is good but it needs to be implemented and should not be disabled due to technology issue. So that is it. Thank you.